Hello, CyberDoc here. This video is going to be another iPad 2 backlight repair for the uh, larger board soldering. So this seems to be a very common problem in iPad 2 or um, iPad 3 and iPad 4 as well. Sometimes iPad mini. When you change in your glass digitizer or when you change the LCD screen and uh, after you change the LCD screen, you get a dim screen, in this case, in iPad 2. Um, because iPad 3 and iPad 4 has a retina screen, it actually has two separate backlight tracks. Um, so what happens usually is you only have uh, half of the screen that's dim in iPad 3 and iPad 4. So as you can see, uh, this is the common symptom you get from iPad 2 dim screen when the iPad uh, backlight track on the larger board that's bad that you you accidentally fried it when you change the screen so that's the symptom you see you, you get no backlight but you still see image and the iPad works just fine uh, it syncs to iTunes and you can see little dim image under a strong light so to fix this problem uh, CyberDogLC.com. You can get you go to the website. You can get the iPad 2 backlight repair kit, which has a one backlight filter, one uh, backlight IC, and it's optional for you to get the 4 7 coil for backlight in iPad iPad 2 because they don't um, they don't usually go bad all the time. Only rarely the 4 7 coil goes out but it does happen especially in water damage cases uh, that being said so to fix this problem you first have to disassemble the iPad down to its larger board and you want to separate the larger board out do not I, I think some customers sending uh, iPad repair they did it well they tried to do this themselves at home and then they sent it to me but when they do this repair they did not even take out the larger board which could be a problem because um, it was connected to the still connected to the battery and that unless the battery is completely drained which is usually not the case they it, they can really short and damage the larger board further from um, any further repair uh, as you, uh, you, you just saw me remove that little silver retainer from the base of the iPad. I don't know why Apple put that one there. Well, I actually know why they put it one there because um, it's one of those last minute thing they they put a little retainer on the larger board to make it more stable. But in my opinion, it's just blocking my access to the larger board. So I, I don't like that little retainer thing. I usually throw them out without, you know, like instead of putting them back into the iPad, I usually just throw that little retainer out. So yeah, uh, this is the best way to take out the larger board. You use a credit card. The for iPad two, there's a weak spot where they don't Apple didn't put in, uh, a lot of glue underneath the double side tape. It's close to the LCD connector, but be careful. You don't want to damage anything close to the LCD connector. So you want to be very gentle when you try to pry it out. It will be better if you have the. Uh, a prying tool that's not made of metal, like plastic would do. Those you know those the black a uh, black sponge like the black stick they use in soldering, and uh, those are those will be ideal. But credit card works just fine. So once you separate out the larger board, oh another thing you probably want to wear gloves for this just to prevent any kind of static discharge. And constantly touching like uh, like grounding unit, you can discharge yourself. Like for example, I'm I'm working this entire rework on a uh, metallic tray, hence the whole thing is grounded. I don't need to worry about any static discharge. Uh, happen while doing the repair. Really, it's a superstitious thing since the battery is not turning, it's not connected. Um, it only. I never had a problem with static discharge that damage any components, but it's one of those superstitious things you want to do. And wearing gloves is just 
convenient because when you walk with flocks, it can get sticky and yeah, it save you some water from washing hands. I guess it's just make your life easier. Okay, so uh, I like to use a microscope for this repair. You don't really need one because they, if you have good eyesight, you can actually see the filter and the IC. But so I have a microscope, so it's just more it's just easier. Um, this microscope is currently set at times ten. In case you're wondering the magnification, the best soldering magnification is probably around times ten to time, uh, x twenty times twenty twenty times magnification. Uh, ten mag magnification is the usual one for soldering. Twenty is when you want to work on really small pitch uh, pins. I like to listen to. I guess I'm right now in the in the video. I'm I'm picking a radio station. Uh, from Pandora. I like to listen to radio station when music when I do my rework. And those music are copyrighted. That's why I usually mute the volume for my videos because I have copyrighted music playing in the background, and that's the way I like to do my rework. So the next step is uh, you want to take out part of the metal frame on the logic board because it's gonna be blocking in your way when you it's gonna block your access to the backlight filter and backlight IC. It looks harder than it is. I mean, you're really just cutting it with um, a precision cutter, a precision, I guess, precision wire cutter. And you peel it out outward, like literally outward, not up or down from the board, like outward. And it peels relatively easily. And you want to be gentle on that so you don't damage the track. Mm. Let's see what else. Oh, right. Um, if you don't have a precision um, wire cutter, you can use a tall nail clipper. That will work also. But, I mean, the cost is just about the same, so you might as well get like a precision uh, wire cutter. But if you are, you don't have that, you can use a tall nail clipper. That will work just fine. To cut the metal frame in iPad 2. Okay, um, I fast forward the video a little bit because it was just a big gap of me doing nothing on the video, so I cut that out. Now, using your wire cutter or toenail clipper, cut a little piece uh, far away, keeping my far away from the other components on it, and then just peel off like an orange. And once you get to the, that point, you can just rip, you know, uh, twist the wire, the friend off. That this will give you access to the rework area you want to work on. And now I'm using the microscope to examine the area. Uh, you can get the uh, no clean flux I'm holding in the video right now from cyberdogilc.com. So what I did there uh, just now, I took out also a little piece of the CyberDoc alloy 
It's a low melting temperature alloy. I'm gonna be using that to desolder off the backlight filter on this larger board. If you have a soldering tweezer, you can use that too. Um, I just recently got the soldering tweezer. It works fine. I mean, um, I find it easier to, for this particular repair, I find it easier just to use the soldering iron to, with the desoldering alloy, with low temperature alloy. Uh, the soldering tweezer actually works very well as well with the desoldering alloy. I don't think it works, it doesn't work that great the uh, without the alloy so uh, I've been very I lazy I guess I uh, since, since I start using this alloy it's um I, I don't even know how to do this repair without it it's it would be kind of difficult because uh, it might damage the trackpad with high heat so the uh, idea is that since this uh, cyber dog alloy it's low melting temperature and you can it will stay molten when you heat it up so the concept is that you want to mix this alloy with the original solder that's on the larger board and as long as you, your solder iron is hot enough like 300 degrees Celsius and above that can melt the original solder and the solder will mix and once it mix it will be easier to melt it down and remove it at a lower temperature and that will prevent the track the solder pack on the larger board to get copper pad get damaged from high temperature or force for example and on a, it's kind of like flux think of think of it, it since once the the alloy is melted like um, liquid it like another thing good thing with flux is that it conducts heat from the soldering iron to the part that you want to solder and the alloy itself will work just like flux because it's a medium that transfer heat so that's another reason why it's good for desoldering because on top of that it, it would lower the combined melting temperature it also transfer heat very well to the components so that's that's the pretty much the basic concept the important ones that I'm using the this alloy Again, you can get the flux and the alloy from you know .com, In case you were wondering, um, the web link address is underneath the description of this video. So, um, I already re so when I was using Southern Iron before, I already removed the filter. And I just put a new one on with some flux residue on it already. Now I'm working on the microscope and I'm using my heat gun at low airspeed. You don't want to use high airspeed on this, you want the minimal airspeed on this. And I think my temperature is either set at 150 degrees Celsius or 200 degrees Celsius for this repair. I'll probably set at 200 just to speed things up a little bit. When you use a hot air gun, you don't need to worry about damaging anything unless it's plastic. Um, when you use, well, you don't need to worry about damaging anything at all when you're using 200 degrees Celsius. The plastic melts, like even plastic on a larger board, it melts above 250 degrees Celsius. So you can you can put that. It's kind of like a hot air dryer. You can use that uh, as long as you want. Actually, um, you it might this, well. This actually will work if you, you don't have a hot air gun. Um, you only have a hot air blower, dryer, or you don't have a heat gun, basically. A hot air, like a regular hair blower will work for this because the alloy I used will melt at uh, 58, 57 degrees Celsius. And I think regular hot air dryer goes up that high if you use like low speed and high heat. Okay, so uh, soldering is down. You want to wait it to cool off a little bit. Um, I usually just touch. Well, you can you can leave it alone for like five to ten minutes. You will cool it off. 
or you could touch it like I usually just touch my finger it feel like the back of the larger board if it's cool then cool to touch you don't feel the heat then it's good enough since I didn't use that much heat to start with with this repair so right now I'm waiting for it to cool down um yeah, you don't you don't want to plug it into the battery when the logic board is still too hot. So this is what I usually do. Um, I change the backlight filter first and test. If that doesn't work, then I will go on and change the backlight chip. And then if that doesn't work, I go on and change the four uh four four seven coil. So as you see, there is backlight and the little uh Apple logo light up with well, you see light basically. <laughs> and um, you want to wait until it boots to home screen just to make sure the entire screen has. Well, backlight's good, and you turns on and off like several times to make sure like the track is working. So there we go. This is iPad 2 backlight repair from CyberDocLC.com. Thank you for watching. All the tools and supplies for soldering, it's uh, you can get the get them from CyberDocLC.com, and the links is underneath this video description. This is CyberDoc. I will see you next time.